And to Libya, where the stalemate continues in the battle for Bani Walid. The northwestern city is one of the largest strongholds of forces loyal to oust Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi. On the outskirts of Bani Walid, the stalemate continues. NTC forces have so far been frustrated in their efforts to take control of the area, one of the last bastions of armed support for ousted leader Muammar Gaddafi. Test firing like this may be the only rounds that are fired by these fighters for the next couple of days after they were forced to retreat on Wednesday. This group said they entered the desert town but suffered a fatality and had to retreat due to lack of support from other groups. There are a few issues, a lack of weapons and men who were supposed to be in the rear. At the front we were engaging from the early morning. We couldn't understand why the groups in the back retreated. We moved forward and met very strong resistance. At the end of August, the NTC moved into Tripoli and took control of the capital city, a previous Gaddafi stronghold. But the ousted leader remains at large and the NTC believe that he and his associates may be hiding out in Beni Walid. Night for us too, right? Yeah. Fox News alert now, the U.S. expanding its drone program, and get this, U.S. defense officials say part of an escalating campaign on what be, uh, might be the newest front against al-Qaeda. Steve Santani's on this story. Now, which countries are of concern, and how long has the U.S. been working on this, Steve? Well, Bill, the U.S. Uh, US official tells Fox News it's been more than a year that this has been in the works. Uh, two important factors coming together here. The, the growing threat from al-Qaeda in Yemen and Somalia, and the growing effectiveness and importance of unmanned drone aircraft. According to this U.S. official that we talked to, the preferred location for a drone base was Ethiopia, but that took time to arrange. In the meantime, we began flying drone missions from a base in the Seychelles Islands, and now the newest piece in all this, a base in Saudi Arabia. The base in Ethiopia is aimed primarily at the Somali militant group al-Shabaab, but this system of bases will effectively cover the entire Horn of Africa and Arabian Peninsula. You know, we, we've covered these stories regarding Yemen, uh, but you wonder how important drones have been in this region already. I mean, Yemen is one of them, but in Africa where? Right, tremendous importance. The U.S. has launched drone attacks in six countries so far, Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, Pakistan, Somalia, and Yemen. Uh, they've been extremely valuable to U.S. forces in the border regions between Afghanistan and Pakistan, as you remember. Uh, they go after the al-Qaeda operatives hiding in that very rugged border region. Important al-Qaeda figures have been taken out with these unmanned aircraft. In fact, a top al-Qaeda operative was killed just last week in Pakistan's tribal areas. The planes can be flown by experts in the U.S., but they have to be forward based near their targets, and that's the importance of this new network of bases to get close to, to the areas where al-Qaeda militants are operating. Oh. All of this, by the way, originally uncovered in WikiLeaks cables. But oh, what a weapon this has been in this war. From a if you see smoke and lots of emergency vehicles tomorrow, if you hear sirens or simulated weapons fire, don't be shocked. It's only a drill. Denver's largest terrorism response exercise ever is just hours away. Fox 31 Denver's Hendrick Sobrandi is live tonight at Park Meadows Mall with more. Hendrick. Libby, I am at the mall tonight because this is where Operation Mountain Guardian is actually going to begin. Emergency responders will be responding to four mock terrorist attacks, including one early tomorrow morning here at Park Meadows. It was nearly three years ago that 10 coordinated shooting and bombing attacks shook Mumbai, India. That terrorist incident, which killed over 160 people, provides the template for Friday's Operation Mountain Guardian in Metro Denver. The purpose of the exercise is to, uh, is to test uh, how we would not only respond to uh, a large-scale terrorist attack in Denver, but how we would coordinate an attack that crosses county lines is in multiple jurisdictions and multiple sites. In this simulation, four places will be attacked. Park Meadows Mall, Smedley Elementary School, Union Station, and the Community College of Aurora. As in a similar exercise in Boston this past May, various different agencies will be dealing with hazardous materials, mock casualties, and each other.
communication between different jurisdictions is always an area of concern. Uh, it's something that uh, we've talked a lot about in the Denver area, but this is the first time we've really tested it. Denver may not compare to New York as a potential terrorist target, but as a Fox 31 investigation showed recently, the city has plenty of vulnerabilities. Thank you. Okay. Sneaking a steel pipe and fake gun into places like Sports Authority Field, the Pepsi Center, and the state capitol was disturbingly easy. That wasn't a pat down, I'm sorry. It's a reminder that tomorrow's exercise does count. And this is a list of the 107 agencies that will be taking part in this drill tomorrow. This is a big deal. Another 400 volunteers will take part as well. The drill has been a year and a half in the planning. Organizers say people won't notice a whole lot of what's going on at the various locations around the city. Uh, it's uh, scheduled to start at 5 a.m. and last until 4.30 tomorrow afternoon. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Friday, September 23rd, 2011, and I'm Darko. This is my website, ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. Also, I have a, a YouTube channel, ddarko2012, and you can check that out. That's ddarko2012. There's also a poll that you can vote on here and uh, many other little features that I already went through in the first two videos, so go in there and check that out for your new listener. Uh, NATO extends Libya bombing campaign, and uh, it goes in there and said that it's going to take it uh, a three-month extension. Of course, just because I mentioned in my last set of videos, what um, that the NTC is uh, having a hard time calling it a stalemate. So, uh, either way, we're going to move forward here. UN agency confirms raw uranium in Libya. So, just like uh, Iraq, you know, yellow cake uh, uranium was found. And uh, so uh, Gaddafi just had this humongous military and he was just going to blow up the world, right? No, I, I don't think so. I don't think he had that big of a military. They were working on uh, nuclear weapons, um, but his sons, uh, I think I believe it was Al Saif, um, actually helped coordinate uh, the disarmament of Libya. And that was in 2003. So, and they were doing that so they would leave him alone and quit putting sanctions and that on him. So in U.S. Libya nuclear deal, a Qaddafi threat faded away. So you can go there and check that out. It talks about how they disarmed. So they're just trying to get you scared and stuff so they can legitimize more pillaging and raping of the Libyan country. Former Libyan premier jailed in Tunisia. Uh, so Tunisia court sentenced premier uh, prime minister al Baghdadi, and uh, he's Sentenced to six months in jail for charges of illegal entry into the North African country. So, illegal entry. Come on, dude. Uh, it says here, report how to win businesses in Libya. I, this is no joke. This is no joke. After bombing civilians, after mercenaries going around and, uh, and killing people and raping people and... Uh, basically, they're going out and single, singling out blacks uh, that were living in Libya and all the hor uh, atrocities, beheadings by NATO, and just how to win business in Libya, you know, as if it wasn't about business to begin with. No, it was about humanitarian, humanitarianism. It goes in there and talks about how the terrorists invited uh, Sarkozy and um, all these warmongers to come and slice up uh, Libya's assets. Palestinians submit UN statehood bid. And uh, you can go in there and check that out. Uh, they don't even think that they're going to get enough seats. But uh, there was a Young Turts poll. I tried to play the video, but of course it was like my other videos. It was just a black screen when it was in widescreen, so I didn't play it and for time reasons. But it basically said that most uh, Israelis citizens support a Palestinian state. Palestinian shot dead by Israeli soldiers. I said a Palestinian man has been shot dead by Israeli troops after they fired live bullets to break up clashes between the Palestinians and Jewish settlers in the West Bank city of Nablus. And then we move on. Palestinian child injured in hit and run. Now it says right here last year, so I'm not exactly sure if this was an older incident or this was recent, but it did say that uh, the victim uh, was knocked down on Route 60 near entrance a settlement on Friday. So, and a Palestinian boy critically wounded after being hit by a vehicle driven by an Israeli settler in the West Bank. So, we're going to move on here. Obama sold Israel bunker buster bombs. This is uh, pretty much all over the news. And then we have this U.S. drone kills three in Pakistan, non UN sanctioned. U.S. drone strike has killed at least three people and wounded several others in Pakistan's uh, northwestern tribe. And the Pakistani government or puppet regime, whatever you want to call it, uh, reported as being um, militants and not civilians. 
Iran to send second aid convoy to Pakistan. Then moving on here, Pakistan warns the U.S. you will lose an ally. So uh, you can go in there and check that out. It's about them warning the U.S. it's risking losing an ally if it continue to accuse Islamabad of playing a double game in the war against militancy. And uh, we move on here. An assassination the Taliban doesn't want credit. For. They're talking about the strike on the U.S. Embassy and NATO headquarters recently. The Taliban rushed to proudly claim responsibility for the violence, even while the U.S. blamed Taliban affiliate Haqqani Network. But in the wake of yesterday's assassination of former Afghan President uh, Ravani, he said he was a spearheading the uh, Afghan government effort to strike a peace deal with the Taliban. He said that the Taliban officials are sounding uncharacteristically cautious. And it says here, uh, Pakistan was behind attacks on U.S. Embassy in Afghanistan, says top White House aide. So what this sounds like is a possible false flag. Um, because if the Taliban don't want to take credit for it, and then you have the U.S. saying that Pakistan's government was responsible for it. I think it's because this is, I think the Pakistani government is under a lot of pressure by its people because of the drone strikes that these people, the U.S. and his cronies and the CIA are carrying out. They're killing a lot of people, especially civilians, and they're pissing them off. And the government of Pakistan is being put in a corner or in a position where they eventually can't support these drone strikes anymore and, you know, and have any legitimate uh, uh, control over that country. So just like uh, the CIA uh, agents that got killed, uh, before on that base, it was a lone uh, uh, person. I think that was done. That was a false flag to what? It was because of there was a, a huge drone strike of like killed a lot of people, like 50 of them. And people were riled, man. It was in Afghanistan, I think, or Pakistan. And then uh, and then afterward came uh, what? The CIA suicide bomber. So they kill it. They kill themselves in order to uh, in order to get get rid of any kind of uh, uh a bad image. So basically what I'm saying is is the US is po probably or uh, possibly responsible for allowing or um, indirectly um, uh, bringing carrying out an attack uh, on this US embassy in Afghanistan to blame it on Pakistan so that they can force them to support their war of terror and war on sovereignty. Now I'm going to move fast here so just stick with me. The links will be posted in the video description on YouTube. GI admits sport killing in Afghanistan. I think he was kind of um, sorry for it. it. says here half of US military suicides sought medical help and that's because they're asked to do horrible things. Iraq supports and some enjoy doing it. Iraq supports Iran nuclear rights at UN. 10 civilians die in battle for Mogadishu. And 16 or uh, 17 Al-Shabaab fighters were killed by drone strike just a week ago. So it's getting bloody there. Uganda, WikiLeaks could be work of CIA. So they're comparing this open source enterprise uh, as a way to deny that they're involved in spying and clandestine work which involves breaking all the rules and it compares it to uh, the old Cold War radio free Europe and it basically said that that these leaks are really just disseminated uh, underneath it maybe the dirty work of the CIA to use WikiLeaks to name shame and embarrass without bringing the US government into the negative spotlight which makes sense because that one guy, the blonde haired dude, uh, as Sanj, whatever, uh, that's why he never went to jail. Kurdish fighters claim Ankara bomb attack, so separatist groups came responsibility for the deadly bombing in the Turkish capital. Then uh, brutal response as Syrian children join protests. And I just think this is a propaganda piece. They're just putting him out there like that. It's pretty bad. Syrian official TV denies killing during Friday protests. Yemeni forces attack main opposition. That's right, Al Salih's backs calling for the end of violence. Muslim women defy French law by wearing Islamic male. And the Indiana Supreme Court backs a lower ruling of a Magna Carta common law going back to 1215 in Indiana that an individual has the right to defend himself against unlawful uh, entry into his house, i.e. Fourth Amendment. So they no longer have the right. It says here, Massachusetts Supreme Court approved charging innocent ticket rece whether or not they are commi they've committed the alleged crime. That's real nice. Media alarm is police force TV crews to hand over riot footage so they can't see the, the crimes committed by the state. Military holds peacekeeping drill with live ammunition. That sounds friendly. Bolivian anti-drugs cop jailed for cocaine trafficking. Singer Pat Boone insists Obama born in Kenya. And then we have explosions caused by jet fuel and water sprinklers brought down the towers. Yeah, right. Give me a 
and break. Then we have U.S. school district to begin microchipping students. Not joking, GM's OnStar now spying on your car for profit even if you unsubscribe. Internet hits all-time high as news source TV at all-time low. China's largest microblog steps up censorship measures. Japan sends new spy satellite into space, so better be careful. Last time they did that, they had the big Kobe earthquake. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.